you are welcome to another episode of LFN What's Your Say? The leading listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. There are many discrepancies in the statements that R. Kelly accusers have been making ever since they launched the campaign against him back as early as January 3, 2019, when the infamous docuseries Surviving R. Kelly was released. We saw a team of fully grown women take to lifetime television with stories that sounded like the biggest mudslinging campaign ever launched against one man. Some of the outstanding accusers in this documentary included ex-wife to R. Kelly Andrea Lee, whose main complaints were about R. Kelly's alleged physical abuse for which we saw no evidence to back up any of her claims. It is suspected and strongly believed that Andrea Kelly was only doing this to protect herself from any criminal charges that could have arose as some of the women told their stories. We also had a one Lisa Van Allen who had previously testified against R. Kelly during the 2008 trial, and was back to collect the lewd she was never granted back in the years. Accompanied by her father, Lisa Van Allen walked to the courtroom majestically with her mouth full of lies, and thought she could beat the mathematics behind her age count, which clearly when done well will show that she was already 18 years old and legal when she met R. Kelly during the Home Alone video shoot. Another interesting accuser who we feel was so shameless to even show up on the surviving R. Kelly documentary was Asante McGee, who is renowned for stealing from his boyfriends as we was told by one of her ex-husbands from whom she derives the name McGee. According to her ex-husband, Asante McGee is the kind of woman that would hung out in clubs all night making sure to reserve VIP tickets so she could sit next to R. Kelly. After doing this multiple times, she finally got her break and like she had wanted so badly, R. Kelly begun dating her. She shamelessly calls herself the fly and who would travel from her state to Chicago to meet with him, and complains so bitterly about having to wait for him for several hours, sometimes the whole day before she could get to see him as if this is a crime. It is the presence of such quack accusers as Asante McGee in this documentary that greatly compromised its value, turning it into a defamation production only intended to destroy R. Kelly's image and pave way for the prejudicial jury to send him to prison for all the wrong reasons. Asante McGee met R. Kelly when she was already 32 years of age, but also claims she was brainwashed and taken advantage of, and yet it is her who was chasing after the R&B king and not the other way round, stalking him in clubs at a cost of expensive VIP tickets she bought with her husband's money. She, she don't use countless money that I basically I work hard for, you know what I'm saying, to basically get VIP spots, to get uh, boosts, to get anything that close to whatever he was playing, whatever he was doing, whatever he was if anything, considering she was a mature adult above the age of 30 and very well on the third floor of her lifespan, she was the one using R. Kelly and taking his money which was rightfully meant to provide for his children's welfare. And then came Kitty Jones, the woman who is popular for appearing in a cage with R. Kelly on stage, and voluntarily acting a sexualized music scene in front of an audience of young and old citizens for whom she had no consideration but now claims to care so much about the said victims like she has the moral authority to do this. She also met R. Kelly when she was already an adult working as a DJ in some club but chose to quit her job to be with him. A decision she made voluntarily as an adult woman of sound mind. But she too was on the documentary misrepresenting the R and B King like he owed her something. It turns out these accusers simply want R. Kelly to suffer because he left them, and perhaps because they felt played and betrayed when he couldn't choose them among the rest. The sad part is that it is these accusers who took part in the surviving R. Kelly series, and that were used as the excuse to make an indictment and take R. Kelly in such that the government could get enough time to manipulate the laws and leak restricted information to get Asriel Clary on board as their principal witness. Little did they know that Asriel too had her own falsehoods in her story and this is what's currently costing the government prosecutors. Today we focus on the contents of the trial transcript and what they suggest when it comes to Lisa Van Allen's cross-examination done by Jennifer Bonjean during the Chicago trial. We all know that this particular surviving R. Kelly star has for decades been lying to the world that R. Kelly slept with her when she was 17, forgetting that the day she met him was at the filming of the Home Alone video which makes her 18 years old and legal. Well. She might have turned 18 the same year but this doesn't make her claims of being 17 mathematically correct. It's even more weird how she defends her lies during the cross-examination by Bonjean. 
When asked whether the day she participated in the video shoot is when she met R. Kelly, she answered yes. When asked whether she recognized herself in one of the images taken at the filming of the Home Alone video, she said she did. When asked if she testified that the shoot took place in August of 1998, she said yeah. When asked whether her birthday is in June, she said yeah indeed my birthday is in June. Then she was confronted with her claim that she was 17 then and she answered I was 17 for half of the year. This was rather funny and weird for her to think that because she was 17 for half of the year until her birthday in June, she would be correct to say she was 17 for the rest of the year. Even after catching her with her pants down that she lied she was 17 when she was 18, when she was asked whether she lied about R. Kelly she still insisted she didn't lie. When asked again whether she lied about how old she was, she insisted she did not know her age and plainly answered I didn't know. This woman is quite bold to be lying like this on the stand. It's at this point that she began answering I don't remember whenever she was asked anything. Asked again what age she said she was back then, she again answers I don't remember, leaving everyone wondering why the court would imagine that these same accusers who could not even remember that they lied about their age could remember anything. This alone is basis enough for the defense to argue that the entire case be dismissed for a lack of memory enough by government witnesses who clearly do not remember anything. Why would the same court which witnessed government witnesses confess they remembered nothing pass a judgment based on their testimony to send a man to prison for 20 years? Meanwhile it turns out that Lisa Van Allen had been lying under oath multiple times about this age issue. When Bonjean refreshed her mind on how she lied to the state attorneys under oath that she had met R. Kelly in 1997 and not 1998, she finally admitted she remembered. But when asked when she actually first realized that the meeting was actually late 1998 and a whole year later that 1997, she said she doesn't remember. Meaning according to Lisa Van Allen, she doesn't remember when exactly she started remembering that it was in 1997 and not 1998. Would anyone believe this? For God's sake R. Kelly is in prison serving an indirect life sentence, on account of testimonies made by witnesses who can't even remember when they started remembering anything that happened between them and the R&B King. This is total abuse of the US laws and of the rights of one citizen for whatever reason I cannot say. Lisa Van Allen was even so rude and almost slapping Bonjean when she was told she should have done the math to tell the right age and she asked. Why would I have to do all that maths when I was only trying to tell the truth? In a way to mean she needed not tell the truth when she was telling her story. Very funny for her to be thinking this way. If you wish to take part in a live interview discussing any of these topics, let us know by sending an email to sashalfnmedia at gmail.com for scheduling. Thank you for watching today's video, a production of LFN Media, giving you another perspective of issues at hand. We make it our business to keep you updated with the truth amidst the cloud of lies the media wants you to believe. It is therefore important to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon and allow all notifications so that you don't miss out whenever we publish a new video.